boy, have I got a story to tell you guys. And if you want a little clue as to what I'm talking about, you see the box in front of you, just in case it's too far away for you to read the print. I'll zoom in a little bit. Now look right there in the upper left hand. You know what it is. Yes, indeed. And uh, the story is this box just showed up on my doorstep. No warning. Nothing. I ain't mad, a little disturbed, but I ain't mad. What's good, my peeps? It's your knucker. The ruck is humming, coming at you, and we got it right here. We've got the Marvel Legends HasLab in Reach 24. In other words, for year 24, uh, Marvel Classic, and the classic we're talking about here is Dr. Henry Pym, a.k.a. Giant Man. That's what's hidden within this shipper box. So uh, we are going to uh, get into it straight away. You got to know I'm excited. What do you know? A shipper box inside of a shipper box. Shocking. And now that we finally peeled the layers off the onion, we can... Uh, wait, uh, oh, oh, wait, wait. Hold up a second. Nah, that, that's not right either. Looks good, though. Looks good. I see Hope, Cap, Natasha, Tony, Thor, Clint. And look down there, we've got Janet, too. But no, this, this, this isn't what we're looking for. There we go. Now, that looks about right. That looks, that looks like what we're looking for right here. There we have it, y'all. HasLab, Giant Size, The Avengers, we are talking about Giant Man. HasLab 24, cover art looking real good as you have The Avengers. And, um, of course, we are talking about uh, the comic version of The Avengers from the MCU, uh, including The Wasp with this, uh, with this bunch. We've got the... Uh, like I said, the Avengers from uh, the movies only, of course, these are their 616. Well, I can't even say that anymore, can I, since it's been established that the MCU is 616 as well. All right, then. The comic versions of the MCU characters. Left to right, Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, Captain America, Hawkeye, and the Hulk. And up there with Giant Man, we've got Janet Van Dyne. The Wasp. Very nice looking package. They've got it. Uh, it's kind of like a, uh, a comic cover. You see in the upper left hand corner, we have uh, uh, an image of uh, Hank and Janet, Marvel Legends. You got HasLab at number three because that's what this is for the uh, Marvel Legends HasLab. This is the third one. And uh, finally got it. It is HasLab 2024. So now that uh, we've worked our way up to this, let's see what we got going on inside. Here's what it looks like out of the packaging. Nice and uh, wrapped up. We've got the, uh, the face plates. If you recall, we uh, got face plates so you could change the expression inside of the uh, masked head. We've got uh, upper left smiley upper right we've got the gritting angry lower left we've got the zombie faceplate and then uh, over there to the right we've got the antennae and uh i don't see the uh the eyes we're supposed to be getting eyes if you recall the eyes uh you can move them around to add to the expression then of course you have the body itself if you look up there at the top, there are some instructions that I placed up there just to get into the shot. So um, next up, we're going to be taking him out of the bag, so to speak. All right. So for the first time ever, I've changed the angle of my camera. And uh, I just thought that it would be uh, necessary and appropriate doing it this way, especially since uh, our boy Hank is pretty big boy pretty tall and 
I think this uh, makes it a little bit easier to show uh, show him off, so to speak. So once again, you see the uh, what's going on, how he's wrapped, and uh, the accessories that he came with. We'll break out uh, the uh, the masks, and you see, or I shouldn't call them masks; they're actually faces. And you can see what we're working with here. This is the smiley face. This is the uh, the the angry face, and it's got uh, the eyes in it. And uh, yo, that's looking crazy right there. Check out the eyes, the way they're looking as is. Well, I know they can be adjusted, but geez, we've got the zombie face. Guess I'm gonna have to break out uh, some of those uh, Disney Plus uh, zombies, and then we have here the uh, the different antenna. You know, we got uh, a set of black and a set of white, and I believe there's a uh, supposedly a damaged one for when you rock the zombie head. So that's what I'm thinking. And uh, I don't see anything else. If there's anything else, it's going to be underneath Hank. So, we will get to Hank himself. He's sporting the stoic face off rip. And he's got uh, uh, his uh, stern eyes in right off the bat. So lifting him up. And I'm going to... Uh, Remove the cellophane bag and just toss that some kind of way, and uh, there you go. So I believe we're all out. I'm going to move Hank out the way for right now. Just make sure that that's all we've got here in the in the packaging, and uh, that's what it's looking like. So uh, I guess uh, next segment we'll be looking at this guy head on. All right, here we go. We've got Mr. Pym in all his glory, uh, totally uh, out and standing. And, uh, yep, I, of course, as I stated before, had to uh, set the uh, camera further back in order to get all of him in. And, uh, yep, yeah, so um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, confirm that height. And... Uh, that means that uh, because he's as far back as he is, I'm going to be partially in this uh, in frame here. I think I'm going to be. I'm going to try not to uh, overwhelm the uh, the whole thing. So we'll see. I don't know if uh, I'm successful or not. But uh, yeah, boy uh, is about uh, 24 inches tall which is what he was uh, reported as being. So we definitely got the height there. Gotta love that. And uh, next we're gonna check out is um, the articulation. For that, I will uh, zoom in just for the express purpose of being able to get the camera in closer. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, we'll check out uh, the different face plates and what have you. All right, here we are. Like I said, closer up. And uh, I, I did a, a double whammy there. I was able to move the camera up closer and move Hank up closer to the camera so I won't have to stretch as far. You know what I'm saying? So uh looks good. I've got my pointer here. We can check out those eyes. You already see what's up. We're supposed to be able to adjust them. I think uh, for right now, his right eye is uh, a little... Uh, 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 semi cross eyed. So once I uh, get into that part, we'll uh, adjust then. But um, in terms of the articulation scheme, and there is crazy articulation on this big boy. I already, of course, I had to work the joints to make sure that um, they would function properly once I got it on camera. So, um, and they do. His head is on a dumbbell so he can look up that far the only person he needs to really look up to is Galactus in our collection 
and uh, it can go down that far. Nice. You, of course, get your uh, rotation in terms of attitude. You get a little bit of that going on. He's got uh, his shoulders. We can get you a T-pose just like that. He's got butterfly joints, and they work exceptionally well when it comes to rearing back. Turn him this way so you can see what I'm talking about. Very, very nice there. In terms of the clasp, let's see what we got going on there. You hear the ratchets, right? Very ratchety. He's very ratchety. So he can clasp about that close together, which is nice. Bicep swivels. He's double jointed. You know he's going to be pinless. So double jointed pinless elbows. And we are ratchety big time. We've got the uh, swiveling wrist. And of course it hinges horizontally, standard hinge. And uh, now let me move all the way over here. That's amazing that uh, I have to move him aside just so we can take a look at the hand and those fingers. The fingers, every knuckle, every joint has articulation. So you see right there, right there. And right there and you get that with all four fingers which is cool which means you can grasp a character we'll investigate that a little bit later and you can ball a fist we go right there and this one wants to be difficult but it goes Trust me, it goes. It'll go. Oh, I just had it off-centered there. And then, of course, the opposable thumb. Every knuckle with that will go. And look at this. You even get a hinge there at the palm, a palm hinge. So that's cool, too. And you go over there, and there you have it. Work on it, and you could probably get, it a little, get the fist to be a little bit tighter. So that's pretty cool right there, moving him back into frame. And uh, let's see what we're going to do now. Guess what we have to do is come down a bit so we can see some of that torso articulation. So bear with me. It's always like this when we're doing these Haslabs and these oversized figures. But I'll come down just a skosh so we can get to the midsection and rock that. He's got a diaphragm so he can go forward a bit just like that and he can go back. His uh, harness there that goes over his uh, shoulders, it, it, it doesn't really impede. Uh, you may think it does and you'll want to be careful which is smart but uh, you'll be okay and of course you can get left and right pretty pretty well pretty well and of course you're gonna get your rotation up there we also have an inverted ab crunch and you hear the ratcheting going on you work that in conjunction with that diaphragm and you can get Hank to go that far forward boy we got some serious ratchet going on this far back crazy but I love it can't front and uh, let's see I'm going to uh, he, I ratcheted him so much that he doesn't want to stand anymore okay I'm going to go down a bit more to get to uh, the lower half of our boy and uh, we will rock that in terms of his articulation like I said, he's got plenty of it. Very, very nice. Hips. Listen to that ratchetness. Go out that far. Boy, I tell you. He can hit. He can get you 90 for real. Big boy will get you 90. And, uh, oh. We'll go that far uh, back. He can get you the... Uh, the, the thigh cut, knees, pinless of course, double jointed, and you 
got some nice range on that and the ratchetness continues as far as the foot is concerned let me lift this up and have him balance you can point the toe forward almost totally ballerina style and this big boy is pretty nimble you can get it up that far with the boot you do have ankle pivot no holes the bottom of this guy's feet because uh, exactly what stand would have him so do that back on camera of course get our boy down and back get him to stand on his own there we go he is standing on his own but he's not centered so now he's centered and now I have to go up in order to get his face in frame and repurpose him center him up and that's what we got going on that is the articulation scheme for our giant man has lab style now we're going to uh, add on the antennae we're going to start with the white ones so this is what they look like out of packaging as you can see and uh, we've got ports at the top of his uh, forehead there so you just uh, line them up and push it in same with the right one line it up and push it in Make sure that they're fully seated or else they're going to look kind of, uh, they won't look symmetrical. So make sure Hank stands up. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, what we got going on. Let me uh, go up a little bit and zoom in so you can get a little bit uh, better look at that goodness there. So, uh, of course, uh, hard to discern with a, a back, uh, a blank or white blank. When I say blank, I mean, I have no background back there with a white background, just the wall. That's because I don't have any background tall enough um, that I could have used on this studio. So uh, this is what you get. And here's what he looks like with the black antenna in place. Now we will work on Hank's head meaning the face plates and the eye situation. One thing I can tell you is we do get instructions. You see what we got going on here. So we do get an instruction book and you see you can remove that uh, the head and then get underneath the chin and, and then you start raising up, etc., etc., etc. So uh, that's what we will do. We will remove Hank's head first and look what we have there it almost looks like Arnim Zola over there so we got that so I'm going to move the body out of the uh, out of the frame so we can uh, see what we're doing here and uh, here's the head straight up and I believe from the instructions you get underneath the chin and then you just raise up and remove of course I'm being delicate because you know when it's new you're unsure of yourself and you don't want to jack up your your has lab that's for sure but it's coming I just have to work it I guess but it is coming I think I'd feel better if I remove the antennae that may give me a little bit more confidence to to get on with it so okay I'm going for it now build up my confidence there are the eyes right there so yeah there we go so this is what we look like blank slate style and of course here's the stoic face and those eyes which come out this way and uh yeah my eyes are looking they, they are both of them technically are off to the uh off to the to the left if you will and then here's uh just that this looks like uh this is reminding me of something from, uh, anyone remembers the movie, 
Jeepers Creepers. Dude was removing faces and they just had a, they looked like that. That's real crazy there. We're going to go to the, uh, the uh, quote unquote angry face next because this is the face that came with the additional set of eyes. And uh, these eyes are a little bit more bulbulous, if you will. You see that going on right there? And of course you can uh, change them up. I'm going to get the stoic face again and see what uh, the eyes look like with that. Oh, he looks absolutely crazy. That's crazy right there. I don't I don't think I'm going to be uh, displaying Hank with these eyes with this particular face print. So, uh, uh, yeah, not, thank you, but no. We'll go back to the angry face where it makes more sense to have these big, crazy looking eyes. So, yeah, so there you have it. And uh, I'll uh, demonstrate putting it in with this one. But when we go to uh, the other two uh, sculpts, we will just simply... Uh, do it uh, off camera. This one is already proven problematic because the eyes want to come out on me. So that's what happens when, uh, you know, these has labs, especially the first go around and we try to uh, get it out there. So we got that. Now let's see how this is going to work. I guess I have to go down because I don't want the eyes to fall out. And then force it in, push it in, get the uh, get the mask over it, and then pull down. The eyes already looking crazy. Hopefully they'll seat properly. Now my eyes are already looking kind of crazy. They're not seating properly, so we're going to pull this back out. Oh, I see. I had that they wanted to fall out. Now, we got it. So that's what uh, Hank looks like when he's angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. And I was mistaken. This other uh, face print came with eyes as well. I don't know what I was thinking. These are the uh, side eye ones. And it's appropriate that they came with the smiley face because that looks bugged out too. But very nice. To assist with uh, putting the uh, face plates on, you may uh, find it easier to lift up the mask and bring down the uh, the actual, uh, you know, where the uh, head goes. And I think, yeah, you can actually take it apart. And I think that'll make things a little easier. We'll see. I know it'll be easier to to put the face print on the uh, the head but of course it's getting it in the mask that means something there's the uh, the zombie head and now there's the mask by itself I want to see what we got going on this way because the key really is getting it over the bridge of the nose but yeah see that works easy that's pretty cool and uh, I don't want to take away from how gnarly this head looks Lord have mercy and uh, it has its own uh, antennae because they, the antennae it comes with are they you know they're eating up some so you stick those in when you put on zombie Hank's head or face and uh, that's what you got there you have to look in there you see the bite marks or the, the wear marks on uh, those antenna and uh, he's got the uh, crazy zombified green eyes this is a very nice head sculpt I don't know uh, I, I don't believe I'll be posing it with this um, maybe to take some shots with the other zombie uh, Avengers but um, yeah still a nice uh, addition even though it is a one-off you know when I went through the articulation segment I neglected to show this and that Hank also comes with toe articulation as well and uh, you know shouldn't be any excuse but let's be uh, real we rarely get toe articulation these days but uh, there you have it. And now it's comparison time. And we will kick this off with two guys, two bad guys, two villains that uh, are um, very uh, closely associated with uh, Dr. Henry Pym, a.k.a. Giant Man. Uh, on our left, we have Egghead. Um, not so much as uh, he used to be back in the 60s. 
uh, is he the arch nemesis, if you will, of Giant Man, but uh, he definitely was one of the primary antagonists that Hank faced back then, and then we all know what's going on on the, uh, the right side. That is Ultron, his creation, meaning Hank's creation, Hank's son, if you will, and uh, we all know what problems Ultron has given Hank and the Avengers as a whole over the years. So for this comparison, I figure we do something a little different, a lot different. We've got every version of Hank Pym as a size-changing hero uh, that uh, Hasbro and Toy Biz have ever put out. That's why you don't see Dr. Pym from the Amazon-exclusive West Coast Avengers 5-pack because he didn't change size. He changed sizes of everything else. What we got going on here, though, like I said, top to bottom, everything that Toy Biz and Hasbro have ever put out when it comes to Hank Pym as a size-changing hero. So, of course, we'll begin to our far left with the Man of the Hour, or HasLab Giant Man. And uh, right below him is uh, Hank, um, we'll say, just say Giant Man slash Ant Man, uh, uh, in the, uh, from the... Um, from the uh, Giant Man Wasp 2-pack that we've got recently that we all know we received uh, in anticipation of getting our Haslabber. And of course, he came in package with an unmasked head, but I put on his masked head just because this is the basically same exact costume that he's wearing, giant size. Then we move over to the left, and we have uh, the Builder figure from Toy Biz, uh, Giant Man. And then to uh, his left, we have Goliath from the Marvel Universe. Marvel Universe is, uh, some of you may remember, was their three and three quarter inch line. And they came up with a few uh, larger uh, scaled figures that were in scale with uh, that line. So this this Goliath was really supposed to be in scale with three and three quarter inch figures. And then to his left, on the same buck, but retooled, we've got uh, Giant Man uh, in a more modern costume. And uh, this was in the Ant-Man uh, SDCC uh, Deluxe Pack. And uh, right in front of him, since we're right there, no need to go across, we've got uh, the same figure. And this was from the, uh, the, Ult the Ant-Man Ultron Wave. And then go to the left, back up top there, we've got Ant-Man, which we got uh, recently um, as an exclusive or, you know, single pack fan channel exclusive, we'll go with that. Um, and of course, in front of him, since they're all sporting the same costume, we've got one of the, uh, we've got one of the uh, smaller Ant-Man, that, that is also from, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, a Marvel Universe uh, set. And uh, then uh, we've got uh, down there real small. Hopefully you can see him. Zoom in if you can't. We've got another uh, small Ant-Man. And this was also from the, uh, the SDCC Ant-Man uh, set. Then we have to their left is yet another Ant-Man from the SDCC Ant-Man set and uh, of course the far uh, left we have Yellow Jacket and uh, we are in desperate need of a new Yellow Jacket. This was from the dark days of Hasbro of Hasbro Marvel Legends when we got this guy. He uh, is basically sporting in part some tooling uh, former Toy Biz tooling. Uh, in other words his feet have articulated toes, hands on articulated though. Um, then we move back up to our right, and uh, I already mentioned, I already mentioned uh, the uh, Ant Man Wasp uh, double pack set version. To his left, we have the I believe this was the main figure for that uh, Marvel Universe, and the red and blue was the variant. They also came out with a, a Bill Foster version, too, by the way. And then in front, we have, uh, we have uh, 
Giant Man, Goliath, whatever, and that too was from the uh, Ant Man uh, SDCC pack. And then to his left, what you see there is uh, Ant Man slash, or rather, Giant Man slash Goliath. That was uh, this one was a uh, chase variant back in the toy biz days, and then they later. Uh, released him as a regular mainline. So he was released twice uh, with Toy Biz, but this is, back in the day, Toy Biz had what they called chase figures. And I tell you, you'd have to chase to find them because they'd be like only one out of, you name the number. So you were very fortunate to find one of any of their quote-unquote chase figures. And um, I already mentioned uh, the uh, giant man, uh, normal size giant man from the uh, Ant Man, the Ultron Builder Figure Wave, and of course everyone else. So that's it, y'all. That's uh, that's crazy how many Hank Pims we've gotten over the years. Here's Hank with his squeeze, <laughs> Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp. And uh, uh, one thing I didn't mention um, when I had the uh, the mega giant man comparison. And I had uh, Ant-Man from the same two-pack that the Wasp came in. Is that uh, I know I never re reviewed them. And uh, for this review was the first time I opened them up. Now you can see how well the articulation in those hands are. My man Hank has uh, got uh, Egghead in his grasp. And he isn't very happy with the Ball Brother. And you knew... I had to find some reason to use the zombie head. We've got, of course, our Haslab Giant Man, Zombie Iron Man, Zombie Captain America, which was the first zombie figure we got and is still the best. Uh, that was a spectacular figure. And Zombie Scarlet Witch. And, of course, uh, I've got the, uh, the neck of background there. And, uh, you know, in order to accommodate Big Hank, couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't get squeeze, couldn't squeeze the, the shot in to just encompass the building and none of the white walls. But, hey, I think it still works. What do you guys think? And so I think this is a good uh, closing shot right here. You knew we had to uh, end it with his uh, his homies, the Avengers themselves, the original Avengers, Thor, Captain America, the Hulk, the Wasp. And, of course, Iron Man. And uh, this really completes the, the look that, you, that you're going for when it comes to the original Avengers. Uh, of course, you can swap out Giant Man for Ant-Man and you get the same look, kind of, sort of. But this is more impressive. I know you all agree. Anyway, enough about that. The Hasbro Marvel Legends Giant Man HasLab Project figure. Long time coming, showed up at my doorstep. It was a shock, a good shock, but it was a shock, and I had to get right on it. I won't even lie to you, this uh, this review basically took all day to do. A lot of figures uh, that I had to uh, collate to for the comparisons and stuff, but that's my issue. Um, anyhow, very tall, 24 inches. The articulation is off the chain, especially in the hands. Every single knuckle is articulated. We've got toe articulation, diaphragm articulation. It's all good. This is an excellent figure. We got those face plates are bananas along with those eyes. Every single face plate, which four of them we get. We've got a different set of eyes um, configured differently. We got some that are like big. And uh, if you put them with a certain... Uh, Certain uh, faceplate, Hank comes off looking like he's crazy. The uh, zombie faceplate is great. Uh, if you feel like, uh, if you want to display Giant Man as a zombie with the other zombie characters from the uh, Disney Plus shows. Um, yeah, it's great. He's got a stoic face, a smiling face, an angry face. It's all good. And eyes that come with all of them. I think that this was a great project. I'm so happy. I don't know. If this is going to be the last Marvel Legends HasLab project since uh, they've moved on to the uh, deluxe pre-order program, which I'm happy about that too. Um, 
for a number of reasons. Those that can't really afford to get something that they want at that time, they get more than enough time to build up the money because you pay when the pre-order, the deluxe pre-order ships. So that's good. So anybody that's thinking about the current pre-order right now, you're good. Order it. Just get on board. You can always cancel if you change your mind. It's all good. So do that. Anyway, enough hard sell about things that have nothing to do with HasLab Giant, man. Everything is great. The colors are great. The blues pop. You know, he's got the red. The harness does not impede the uh, torso articulation and the diaphragm uh, articulation at all. You get uh, different sets of antennae, including jacked up ones for the zombie. It, this, this is just fantastic. And uh, yeah, I don't know what more to say. This has been a long one, but you probably figured it was going to be if it's a HasLab, especially with me. Uh, I make no bones about it. It, I, I have pretty long videos. It is what it is. If you make it made it this far, then that means you truly are rocking with me. Anyway, what do you think about the HasLab Giant Man? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know uh, if you ordered one. Have you received it yet? They've been shipping out. They've been hitting, hitting the West Coast first because they're coming. Basically, where they're being distributed from is literally 40 minutes from my house. So that's why I got it so quickly and uh, unexpectedly. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. You know what to do. Uh, yeah. Psst. Take it in, y'all. Until you get yours, live through me vicariously. It's the ruckus. I'm out. Peace.